Um, hi again, my name is Bruno, and I'm going to talk about the object code emission and LLVM. And LLVM MC, which is a new and experimental tool to handle object code right now. So I'll talk a little bit about the motivation. Um, why, are we, why do we want to, to direct or emit object code? Um, I'll talk a little bit about the background, uh, how the, the code emission is, is done today in LLVM. Um, and then I'll explain in the actual code emission uh, what is our currently design. And then using this, I will show you how I implemented the object code emission for ELF and what are the current limitations for this and the new tool, LLVMC, which addresses um, the previous limitation we had. So um, we have um, the non-path we usually do in compiler. It's, we use our compiler to compile our high-level language and we generate a .s, which we use as an input to assembler. And then the assembler got us, get us the final .o file, which is used as input to the linker, which will give us the final executable. Um, we want to cut that down and embed the assembler into the compiler, so we can, like, the compiler can just generate the .o directly, and we just send it to the linker and get the final executable. So um, why direct object code emission? First, uh, we want to bypass an external assembler. And the reason for this is that um, we want to speed up compile time. Um, and um, the, the, well, now a little bit of the background. Um, we have the, the meters now in LLVM are represented in two ways. We, we have the assembly printers, which actually emit .s stuff. And we have the JIT engine, which emit blobs of bytes to memory and run from there. So the, the assembly printer is, we have instructions that are described in the RLTD files. Uh, Anton talked about that in his talk earlier. And um, in these TD files describing the instructions, we have like a lot of gener auto-generated code. And it's likely that we can use then those generated methods to print this stuff automatically. So here is a little sketch of how it's done. For example, for the x86 assembly printer, uh, when you're printing an instruction, we only choose, oh, if the assembler dialect is something like Intel or AT&T, we just call the auto-generated methods for um, printing an instruction. Um, now we ha I will show you how the JIT works. JIT works basically emitting binary code to memory. Um, we have, actually, we have blobs of code um, which are emitted by a target-specific emitter. So this target specific meter gets the, the encoding of instruction and emits to the, to the memory. Um, and the, this code is emitted you know, as a perfection basis. So we have like a machine function pass, which we'll call for each function, we'll emit the code to the memory. And we have different, uh, for each target, we have a custom emitter. For x86, we have one emitter. For PPC, we have a different emitter. So for example, um, the, the only one of those emitters which are actually um, automatically generated is the PPC1. Um, the x86 and the ARM1 are, are written by hand. So here we have um, a, a regular emitter for JIT. And then we have like this method which is emit instruction which will effectively emit the encoding for and the instruction itself to memory. And this is done through the machine code emitter. So we have first we have the emitters. We have backend target specific emitters like x86 emitters, PPC emitter, and each one of these emitters will have something like this emit instruction method, which will be implemented different for each target. So for example, um, suppose we want to emit an opcode prefix for a lock instruction that is locked in x86. We can just like call this machine code emitter MCA, uh, MCE emit byte, and it will um, throw that byte into the memory. So this is what it does. Um, this this uh, MCE interface I sh uh, I'm showing here, it's a generic one and could be special specialized to um, emit the code in the way one, you want. So for example, the JIT um, does a specialization uh, of the machine code emitter, which is called JIT code emitter. And in, it implements a lot of methods to actually write those bytes to memory. 
So we have sim simple methods to emit byte, emit um, different words depending on the engine of the target, emit alignment, emit stuff for dwarf debug info. So um, when, when you try to, the first time you try to implement object code emission in LLVM, um, we try to use the same scheme as, as JIT does. So we actually inherited from the machine code emitter class and implemented the, the object code emitter class. That way when you call the MC I showed before, um, instead of uh, dumping bytes to memory, it will write to, to actually file of a specific format. So for example, here's how, how we do it. Um, we have a generic key object code emitter and you just specialize it to be a elf code emitter, or a cough code emitter, or a macho code emitter. And um, when, when you're using like, um, when, you, when you're in JIT, the MC just write through the memory directly, but when you're using object code, we, we create an abstraction called binary objects, which are basically um, high level representations of sections and segments. So we have a lot of binary objects through the code, um, each one for a different section. So for example, uh, we have the elf code emitter, and uh, in the elf code emitter, we have to, to handle something, uh, we have to render stuff that it's not, um, it's format specific. So for example, for elf, since elf and macho, for example, doesn't have the same section names for where to put the constant pools and jump tables, um, we have to handle this specifically on, on the code emitter. So we do special handling for constant pools and jump tables on the elf code emitter, and we also handle um, the, gen the target generic uh, relocation codes to the format specific one. This, this example, we have a reloc absolute word for x86, which is a generic and can be used in macho and cough and uh, elf, and we map it to the uh, to the num for the the elf one. So this is um, a little sketch on how this is all done. We have. Um, the code gen here, LLVM IR, and after code gen, we, that function emit instruction I showed, we, we're, um, we start encoding the instruction called the MC emit byte, and it will call the elf code emitter emit byte, and if you are actually emit code, um, the actual binary object representing in the moment will be a dot text, for example, it can be other, but usually a dot text, and you call the binary object emit byte and that will hold the byte for that section. Um, so we have the elf code emitter, which will um, handle those specific stuff for elf. And we have, in the, after we do, we're done with the elf code emitter to emit code, we have to handle all the, the stuff that is specific to the elf format. For, for example, uh, we meet the symbol table, the string table, um, the header and the relocations into its own section, and then we dump the binary, the binary object to a final file. But okay, um, this is works, this is great, but um, actually it doesn't work because of inline assembly. When you hit the case of inline assembly, uh, we just don't have nothing to do because it's in a different part, it's, it's emitting object code and the, the, the assembly stuff, it's in another part of the code. So we actually, we, we have to have an assembly parser. So that's why the new tool of LLVM MC. Okay, what's LLVM MC? It's actually the machine code driver. We, we are using it actually to be a playground uh, with the machine code stuff. We use it to write our, we are writing an assembly parser, um, and this assembler and assembler, and we are using the LLVMC to drive all the commands um, for, for these guys. So um, our goal with the LLVMC, it's we want to auto-generate everything. That means we want to extract all information for, from the TD files, and um, and with that, we want to be able to all generate the assembler, the assembly parser, the code generator, and everything here. Actually, in the future, the, the assembly printer stuff. Um, 